So I just wanted to supplement the lecture earlier with some attacks from the graphical and tabular perspectives, right? The one of the hardest things to do with these functions is the algebraic replacement and simplification. So that's why I focused on that during the lecture. But these perspectives are also really helpful. And you'll see a lot of examples like this in the textbook problems and the practice problems. So I figured I'd give us an example to work through here and just highlight what's going on with problems like this. So let's say I have some two functions, f and g. So f is a linear function, g is a parabola. Doesn't really matter what these are. What we're interested in is combining these two. So let's look at some third function, h, which is f is the outer function and g is the inner. All right, and I'm going to turn that off just for a moment so we don't get confused. But so we've got a parabola inside f, right? We can think about the algebraic way this would look, and maybe I'll even write that out. f of g of x, this might throw some errors here, is 2 times, well, what's g of x? 3x squared plus 1, right? Doesn't that give us the same thing? This is h, where we took g and put it inside of f in that input space. So this is what we would expect. Um, however, if we take a look at the graph, we should be able to chase down some inputs and outputs, right? So if I were to ask you, you know, what is h of 1? It's telling us 7 because of this rule here. But how do we know that that's true um, if we chase down the algebra or look at it from the graph? Well, from the algebra, you could see it's 2 times 3 times 1 plus 1 will give me 7. That's f of g of x. But if I go graphically, let's say this is all I had and I didn't actually have these formulas, what would I do? Well, I go to the inner input, right? g of 1 is the input's input. So I go to x equals 1, so that's right here, and g is the blue curve. So at x equals 1, oh, that's not here, that's here. At x equals 1, g is at 3. And again, you might have this as a table or you might have it as a graph. So you can zoom in and see, okay, at x equals 1, it crosses at about 3 of a height. And so the output of g is 3, and that is feeding f, right? So now we're looking for f of what? 3 to get h's value. So we come over to x equals 3 and come up to where f is lo and behold, we get 7. Okay, so since g of 1 is 3, and we feed that to f, we get 7, and that matches up with what h of 1 is. So that might have been really fast. I encourage you to replay that or walk back through and see what's happening. I'll also leave this calculator in the description so you can play with it yourself and uh, see what's going on. So that's how we can find values. And again, if we did this again for, let's see, x equals 2. So saying h of 2, the composition of f and g, spits out an output of 25. So why is that? Well, g of 2 is going to be quite a bit larger, right? We come over to x equals 2, and we chase up and see what g's value is. Well, it's going to be 12, right? Can't quite nail it, but it's going to be 12. And we know that because g of 2 is 3 times 4. So we can change that. g of 2 tells us that it's 12. So now we're taking g of 2, or 12, and plugging that into f. And f of 12 is 25. f is the red curve, so we can come over here to input of 12, we have to zoom out a bit. See at x equals 12 up here, we're at 25. And so if I turn on the graph of h and I turn this into green, what do we see? h of 2 is 25. So its 
curve, which looks like a ramped up parabola, which it is, is really taking into account both functions chained together, g inside of f. Okay. So the other way around obviously wouldn't wouldn't work. And we talked about that in the lecture video, how these things are not commutative function composition. So likewise, you can chase these things through with a table. If I had a table given of points, and I wanted to figure out what the values of h must be if it's f of g of x, I can come at it from this perspective where I say, all right, h is f of g of x. So my inner function is g. So for a value like negative 2, what are we doing? We're taking g of negative 2 is 12. That 12 feeds into f. So I'm looking for f's value when its input is 12, which is 25. And that takes us where we were right here right? Similarly here for x equals negative 1, h of negative 1 should be, well, g of negative 1 goes first, so that gets us mapped to 3, and then we feed that into f, so f of 3 gives us 7. And so h of negative 1 should be 7, and so if I plug this in here, it should line up with what we're seeing. 25, 7, etc. So this should work for every input that we come through here. Let's say we're interested in at x equals 10. What is h's value? Well, first we go to g. 3 times 10 squared is 300. We feed that into f, right? What is f of 300? f of 300 is 601. And we see that that's what maps up over here to h. Okay, so your tables in your practice problems won't look exactly like these. There might be missing values, and you'll have to use deduction to figure out where um, certain values came from or where certain values are going to. So let's say, like, if I deleted out this g value, but I knew what the h value was, I could figure out with some problem solving what this must have been to get here based on what else is in the table, right? Or if I have a graph what we see on the graph. So I hope this helps uh, illustrate a little bit more about what's happening with chain functions in the graphical and tabular perspectives. And you can use this as kind of a guide and some inspiration as you jump into those uh, practice problems. So as always, see you in the class discussion with any questions.